Well, clearly something needs to be said about this because the hackery has gotten out of control and everybody now is of the opinion that it is okay to pierce a insulator on a wire. I'm gonna tell you a few reasons why it's not okay, why it's never been okay, and no one used to teach that it was okay. But now people are spouting opinions about things that they don't know and they're teaching other people the wrong way. So the reason why we don't intrude on the wire is because if the integrity of that wire is keeping all those electrons that are coming through it right and the other side they're from escaping essentially the atmosphere. This is why a battery has what's called a parasitic, um, actually a surface charge. And that surface charge can actually be seen in the right lighting where those poles are ex ex uh, expressing a field. So <clears throat> when you energize a wire, that same field is what your amp clamp is reaching, uh, or reading rather. So it's also um, with these roads that are actively being salted, you cannot pierce a wire. And if you think that nail polish, which was not is not rubber, okay, it might be a, a non-conductor, right, or an insulator. In some regards, they used to use it on lacquer on on wiring uh, components inside houses. But they got wise to that and they realized eventually it would catch fire. So uh, we don't ever use nail polish because that's just really cheap and lazy. Uh, the other thing I would say, and then, you know, it's cheaper is the, is the answer you get for using nail polish. Who gives a shit if it's cheaper? It's going to last 20 years. You're going to do the cheapest way out of it. And then guys won't even wipe the wire down. I'm just sick of it because, and I'm getting kind of worked up because people who are teaching bad habits are sending out a general, what if everybody poked it? What if 50 mechanics work on that wire and everybody pokes it? Do you think that that wire has not been compromised? And, and, you know, there is no such thing as self healing rubber, right? It's silicone and other things self self heal. Um, but so they'll, they'll fuse back together. That doesn't happen with plastic or, or the, it, the rubber used. They're made with oils. And another thing, if I put a hole in something or a gouge or a cut in something and I go to move that harness when it's sub-zero, that's where it's going to crack. It's going to crack open right there. And also the mag chloride is soaked into the wire when that wire is energized through that field. No joke. It's a chemical, electrochemical reaction. Same thing as a battery is an electrochemical reaction. Well, I know for a fact I've looked at these wires that people have poked once and I've opened them after a couple seasons in that mag chloride and boom, that whole wire is dead right there in the middle. And I've seen people put the, the plastic wrap and the rubber. Listen, do your test, poke the wire, and then cut it and put in a butt splice and heat shrink it so that no free flowing electrons are gonna get back in there. And it's like a scar. I have seen very few um, butt connectors that have in, let a, a water intrude on them. But you know what? A lot of people don't know that there is a special kind of crimper that's called non-intrusive. So you can see right there, as I put it up against the white, that there's no jagged edge. That's a separation, each one between each different um, gauge of wire. You can see their scale on the other side. Why do I use these? I've had these literally for 15 years. I will use no other crimpers because I have gone in after people who have done their job and I get called in later. Oh, I still got a problem with the circuit. And it actually is that the guy's repair lasted one year, right? And there's pokes in the wire. So what I do, um, is I will go in and I will put one of those heat shrink connectors. The the blue ones, they're about 38 cents per, you know, per connector. I'll grab one real quick so we can all be on the same page. And they're made with just in, in all different gauges. You got the pink, the yellow, and the heat shrink has glue. So they're a dual wall, meaning that glue will seal the ends. And what I've seen is that a lot of people will use crimpers that have a very jagged notch to, that makes the crimp. That acts like a little cup and it will soak water in there. And before one season, you'll be pulling over amperage on a multiplexed uh, bulkhead module or something else, right? And it's because it's not that it can't get power there. It's that it's the resistance in the circuit that you're generating with that corrosion means it takes more amperage than, than normal and, and, it's, and the computers know that. So even a bad scotch lock, each time you put a scotch lock in, to me, if you, you're... You're a hack if you're using scotch locks, but you're also a hack if you're poking wires. So these are a few reasons why. I hope this clears up this and, and that no one can sit there and debate that that doesn't happen, any of those three things that I mentioned, and that we can just put this to rest and that everybody stops poking wires. You can go to the backside of connector. It might take a minute, but the time is of the of time is super important when we talk about repairs, but it's also very important when we talk about being systematic. If I'm in a hurry, I will never find the problem. And you don't, deserve, you don't deserve to call yourself an automotive electrician. If you've, we had a guy named Willie Make It. We call him Willie Make It. But he went to the dealer. He was there for about three months. We went to an electrical problem solving class together. 
and um, Willie was the guy smash. He burned his board up, his electrical test board, and smashed in the table, getting angry about, oh, I'll never figure it out. He was still employed there, got another job, and we found out that he had been poking wires and leaving them. So how do you know when we teach these things, like poking a data link wire, would you ever do that? No, never, ever, right? But how do we know that we're not teaching people bad habits because we're not, we're not, why be so specific to say, well, these wires, it's, it's never okay to do, but we can do it on these. That, that's nonsense. Just teach people. Go to the back side of the plug, like I've shown you. Take one of these, you know, uh, these needle type leads and push it. I'm in the view. Push it in behind the uh, the weather pack seal. Make sure you're making connection. Go to the other side of the plug and then ohm it out. And make sure you got, and then wiggle it and make sure that you still have connection. And then you're good with that meter um, reading whatever's coming off that where this lead is. But if you're doing it even with a probe wire, how do you know what you're touching in there and how how good you're touching it? It's just it's nonsense to think that you can take an accurate reading with a with a pierced wire anyway, and it's not a stable enough position to get anything except for intermittent static and and anyway, it's just it's not a very clean way to do the job, and you're compromising a tool or a part rather, and it it is a part. You're compromising it on purpose, and then you're putting some band aid over it that you hope is, is that. that is going to be able to last this duration of time. It will never last the amount of time that a wire would or a butt connector. My two cents. Anyway, I hope that puts that to rest and I'll quit ranting about things like this. Over and out.